Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and today we're going to talk about the Sony X85K, which I feel is one of the most anticipated TVs of the year for Sony, mainly because it's the entry level to get 120 hertz for gamers, as well as having the Trilumius and the Sony color science that we're all used to. Now in this video, we're going to break it down. Is this TV worth buying? So sit back and relax, and let's get started. Now the first thing you should know is that this TV is available in a 43 inch all the way up to 85 inch and we're going to be using a 50 inch on this video today. And at the time of this video, this television is so new, I'm assuming that it's just like last year model where all the panels are VA instead of IPS. Just like the last year model X85J, they're using this black glossy coating around the top of it and around the edges. And at the bottom in the center, you're going to find a Sony logo with a press button on the bottom to get to some of the basic menus. Now the case is still the same size as the last year model, mainly because they're still using direct backlights and it does have frame dimming. In addition to that, it still uses the X1 processor that's found in the previous model, as well as the Motion Flow 960 that was used in the previous generation television. Now I've been using this TV for a few days and really the biggest difference I can see so far is that the X85J uses this Sony remote control and the X85K uses this remote control. But let's continue. To mount this Sony X85K on the wall is very easy. All you need to do is use these little adapters and you can use just about any wall brackets as long as it can hold the weight. The power cord is removable and you have plenty of inputs here on the back. First of all, you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, and a fiber octet output. It has a composite video input, but you must buy adapter and you get two HDMI 2.0 ports and two HDMI 2.1 ports. But the interesting thing is if you use a HDMI arc soundbar, you lose one of the HDMI 2.1 inputs if you have two consoles like the Xbox Series X and a PS5. It does have a LAN connection for connected direct to the router, a RS-232C port for service, and an IR input for controlling it with another device. The X85K does have an ATSC 3.0 tuner ready for the new 4K over the air content, but they did take out the headphone jack that some people really liked. <laughs> but no worries, I took a set of the XM5s, connected it, and they worked right away. Plus, they sounded really good. To test the quality of this picture, I went into the menu, put it in cinema mode, then I went through all the different menu settings, and I made sure that the power savings and the light sensor was turned off so it wouldn't affect the display as I was doing my test. So the first thing I want to check out is the contrast on this television, and I will tell you that you can see the backlight shining through whenever you don't have any kind of content on it. Also, the gray level is really good in the black levels, but when you get into the white, it seems like there's not a lot of range, and I even went into the settings of the television and switched through the different picture profiles. I also pulled up some dots on the screen and did a star field test, and everything looked pretty good. And when doing a blooming test, I could see a little bit of halo effect, but not as bad as you would get on an IPS panel. Previously, I wasn't that excited about Sony Motion, but I went into the settings and I was able to get a really smooth picture just by making a few minor adjustments. Looking at the TV straight ahead, it looks really good. As you get around to the sides, you're going to lose some of the colors, but that's expected just because it is a VA panel. Now, if you're a gamer, there's a couple things you need to do. First of all, if you plug in a PS5, it will automatically configure itself. But in a Sony television, it has three major settings for 4K. You have your enhanced mode, you have your Dolby Vision mode, and you have the VRR mode. And one thing I found out during my test is that all the settings will work with 4K at 120 hertz except for Dolby Vision. So if you have the TV in the Dolby Vision mode, you can play 4K at 60 hertz. But for some reason, when I tried to toggle over to 4K 120 hertz, the TV automatically switched me back to 1080p at 120 hertz. And at first, I thought it was something wrong with the television, but after going to Xbox Support's website, I noticed that this TV just don't support it, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. And I tested the input lag with a 60 hertz tester and I was able to get all the way down to 14.7 milliseconds, which is not bad for a television. Turn right. You can use the X85K as a computer monitor, but if you're right in front of it, I'm going to recommend go with the smaller size, like a 43 inch instead of the 50 inch, 
but overall it worked really good it was very responsive and i was running at 4k 60 frames per second it looked fine no matter what i put through it plus this tv does have a graphics mode to enhance the picture quality as well the x85k does have a 10 watt by 2 amplifier and after i was listening to it it actually sounds pretty good for tv speakers there's also a calibration mode and the TV has built-in equalizers to make sure you get the best sound if you're not gonna add a sound bar. Here, take a listen, but keep in mind, this is a recording. Sony did change the remote control and I like this new design mainly because it fits in my hand much better. There was no need for the number pad because everything is now using digital channels, but this remote control is Bluetooth and it has a microphone for not only calibrating a TV, but you can do voice commands with it as well. Also, there's some hotkeys at the bottom to get directly to any of the main applications. So overall, I like this remote control better than the previous models. It is worth mentioning that this TV uses Android 10 operating system, and it's the same operating system that they have in the 80K and the last year J series. And overall, the only difference is I can see at this point in time is that it has a new remote control there's no more headphone jack and this one is compatible with a new sony camera for doing video chat and a lot more features so if you guys are interested in the comments below tell me what you like to see in this tv and i will be doing a comparison in the new future showing this tv versus the x85j from last year and that's the only way we're going to be able to tell if the picture is that much better or if it's the same in my opinion, I think anyone who buys the X85K is really going to enjoy it, but you got to realize that Sony does make more models than this that are higher end, so don't expect the world, but I think coming from a basic or older television, you'll be definitely satisfied with the picture quality. Now, before I end this video, I want to say if you haven't already, head over to techstevehd.com. I'm building a new community over there, and the great thing about that is that you can upload videos, you can chat with me, and you can ask questions. So make sure you go check it out. Also download gethansel.com forward slash techsteve to find my videos wherever you're shopping. With that being said, here's a quick little montage of some footage of the television with actual content on it. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace! Thank you.